Tim Van Gelder has used the what governor or centrifugal governor as a metaphor for the embodied mind. This device was invented to keep the speed of the flywheel on a steam engine constant. This speed can fluctuate because of variations in steam pressure, differing workloads, depending on the number of machines being driven, etc. The amount of steam entering pistons is controlled by a throttle valve. The more steam that enters, the faster the wheels spin. Conversely, the less steam, the less speed. Originally, this speed had to be controlled via constant manual corrections made by a human engineer. Given the difficulty and danger involved in this, the question arose as to how this process could be automated. The answer was the Watt governor. It's connected to the throttle valve and regulates the flow of steam to the engine. As the speed of, of the engine increases, the central spindle of the governor rotates faster, making the balls fly outwards and upwards against gravity. This motion causes the lever arms to reduce the opening of the throttle valve, thus decreasing the flow of steam and preventing overspeeding of the engine. In this way, the governor keeps speed smooth and constant. Could the what governor be computerized? Lawrence Shapiro has suggested a computer solution. It would require an algorithm, which in turn would need symbolic representations, in other words, stand-ins, for both the current speed of the flywheel and the desired speed. The algorithm would use these stand-ins to compute the difference between how fast the flywheel is actually spinning and how fast it should spin. Having calculated the difference, the algorithm would then trigger the necessary adjustments to the throttle valve in order to reduce this difference. So the algorithm would use stand-ins in order to regulate the flywheel's speed. Van Gelder points out that this use of representations is the most important feature of a computational solution. The sequence of operations involving the perception slash measurement computation action cycle. The environment is measured or perceived. Internal representations are created. Computations are performed and actions are chosen. The distinctive features of this computational governor are, according to Andy Clark, one, the use of internal representations and symbols, two, the use of computational operations that alter and transform those representations, three, the presence of a well-defined perception computation action cycle what Van Gelder calls sequentiality and cyclic operation. And four, the susceptibility to stepwise information processing decomposition, what Van, Van Gelder calls homuncularity, end quote. The what governor Van Gelder claims is a non-computational 
non-representational control system. It cries out for a dynamic analysis, especially the relationship between arm angle and engine speed. According to Clark, a fanatical representationalist might claim that the arm angle is a representation of the engine speed. But Van Gelder insists that the real relationship is, quote, much more subtle and complex than the standard notion of representation can handle, end quote. Clark explains that, quote, the arm angle is continuously modulating the engine speed at the same time as the engine speed is modulating the arm angle. The two quantities are best seen as being co-determined and co-determining, end quote. Clark says that the Watt governor is not computational for two reasons. Firstly, computation requires manipulation of token-like representations, which is absent from the governor. Second, there are no discrete operations, and hence no distinct sequence of manipulations, so consequently no algorithm. Therefore, the governor is not computational for a single deep reason. Clark explains that, quote, the continuous and simultaneous relations of causal influence that obtain among the various factors involved. It is this distinctive kind of causal profile that both invites treatment in terms of an alternative dynamic analysis and that causes problems for the traditional computational and representational approach, end quote.